Hi guys, I'm Daniel and this is George. So guys, um, are you planning on hacking on it Berlin? Anyone who's going to be hacking? Okay, so one, two, three people. Okay, cool. Another question, how many of you know what Ethers.js is? Cool, how many of you have actually used Ethers.js? And how many of you like it more than Web3.js? Okay, very common. Uh, so whoever actually has touched Ethers.js likes it more, not that Web3.js is uh, somewhat inferior, but the way that Ethers.js is built is just gives it stability. And Etalime is a tool that we are going to be speaking about in the next 20 minutes. It's actually built on uh, Ethers.js with stability in mind because um, me and our company, LimeChain, uh, we have been developing uh, decentralized applications for the past two and a half years, almost three years. We have worked with more than 20 companies and what we have found is that half of the time we are actually fighting the tools and fighting the, the, the infrastructure instead of fighting the business problem that is there. And we needed to, we said that, hey, we need to be more productive and in order for us to be more productive, we need to have a stability in our development experience in order to be able to tackle the hard business problems that are there. And at this time, three years ago, um, it was only Truffle and Truffle was based on uh, Web3.js as it is now. And we said, we decided to go on mainnet um, after we have developed an application for, for a long time. And we said, hey, we have these four smart contracts that are linked to each other. We want to go on the mainnet. How many of you have gone to mainnet? Okay, how many of you have gone on mainnet through Truffle? How many of you two <laughs> have gone uh, with more than one contract? Okay, what was your first experience when you were doing that, when you had to link multiple contracts with, with Truffle? All good? Not what about you? <laughs> okay, so yeah, pretty much same for me. I had to deploy four contracts, first went through. Actually, no, this is what happened. I had to test very, very diligently. So I went to Ganache, I tested everything. I have full coverage of unit tests. Then I went to Rinkabai. Perfect. Migration scripts, perfect. I went to Robston because Robston is the closest thing you have to mainnet. Migration scripts, perfect. I was super, super confident. Three days later after I pressed the migrate to live, I had one contract deployed eight times. I have spent something like half on it already on something that is not, not there. And as a sign of desperation, what I did is I just spin up a Node.js script based on Ether.js and I said, hey, Deploy me this, deploy me this, deploy me this, deploy me this, link them together through some setter functions. I ran this script the third day and in 10 minutes I was actually able to do what I <laughs> needed to do for, for, three, uh, for three days. And I had a very terrible time. I passed my deadlines. It was, it was fighting the, the tools as I said in the beginning. So based on this story, we said, hey, we are going to be doing it like this, but if we're doing it like this, why don't we actually try and do something more? And in addition to deploying with Ethers.js, we said, hey, why can we actually do compiling? And can we actually do unit testing? And can we actually do coverage? And can all of this be based on Ethers.js because we find the stability is there? And this is how Italime was born. Um, Italime is development and deployment framework based on Ethers.js. It has no configs that you can mess up or commit into your repo where all your private keys with thousands of Ether are there. And it has a documentation that is always up to date. We never release without updating the documentation. Any release uh, that we have also, any, any pull request that we have uh, also has um, a review over the documentation. And last year at DAPCON, we got approached by Ethereum Community Fund and ETH Price, and we got uh, actually granted by them to continue this development. And today I'm going to show you what is the state of Ethalime. And I'm going to uh, um, walk through the different functions that you can have in Ethalime, and then we'll have for you uh, a little video dem demonstration of how all of this uh, looks and feels.
So what you can do is obviously you can uh, init a new project. Uh, we have embedded uh, Ganache core into Italime so that you don't need to install both of them. You can just say Italime Ganache and it spins uh, Ganache for you with uh, a million and million and million of ETH so that you can even test your large ICOs. Uh, IEOs or whatever it's called these days. Um, you can compile and our compiler supports Viper so you can have a mixture of Solidity and Viper contracts. Obviously you can, uh, you can unit test. Um, what's uh, important here is that your unit tests are actually based on ETHRGS so you have a full, um, you have a single library where you can do your client side applications, uh, deployment scripts and your unit tests so you don't constantly need to context switch between two libraries for development. We have a code coverage tool, so you pretty much can see what, how much you have covered your tool. This is based on 0x uh, work. Deployment scripts I already spoke about, it's where everything started. And we have also integrated with Etherscan, which means that you can pretty much say, hey, I want to deploy and verify, and in a single, um, in a single command, you are going to deploy your contract to any net that's supported by uh, Etherscan, and it this and we're gonna, you're going to go to Etherscan. We're going to go to Etherscan API for you and verify your contract. So you don't need to, to bother for flattening stuff, finding out what's go, what version you have used. Everything is there. We have history because a lot of time I have forgotten the addresses that I have used. So you can see the history of your deployments and the different networks. And yeah, there, there are even more stuff that's there. You can debug stuff, you can flatten contracts. Uh, we have integrated ID, uh, which pretty much you can spawn uh, through Lime ID. And we have uh, started our work with uh, identity and integrating uh, ZK Snark so you can generate your uh, witnesses and verifiers directly from, uh, from Lime and make your uh, apps based on, um, on zero knowledge. And uh, one thing that I probably have missed here is we have shapes, something that you might know as uh, boxes in, uh, in Truffle. We have um, six or seven different, uh, different boxes, uh, all major client-side uh, frameworks, Monoplasma, and some more. And seeing these slides is not good enough, so I'll just hand over to Daniel to show you and walk you through different things that we do. Yep, I'm just going to demonstrate you a couple of the commands. Well, we can start. Yeah. So we can start with iterlime in it. Uh, what this does is basically creates your directory uh, with um, some sample contracts, uh, sample deployment script sample unit test that uh, can give you some insight of how you should structure your uh, application, uh, decentralized application. Um, after that, you can spawn a ganache. So when you have the sample dApp, you can spawn your ganache and uh, it will basically uh, give you the 10 uh, default addresses with uh, millions and millions of eaters, as George said. Uh, so you can develop your uh, and test your code. So here is the structure. Um, you can see that there's contracts, deployment, uh, which is deploy, which has deploy script and a test folder. So um, a regular uh, Solidity smart contract with uh, some uh, some uh, lime in it. Here's the deploy script. You can uh, currently it uses the Etherlime Ganache deployer, just uh, two commands and you deploy your contract. Here are the unit tests. Uh, you can see that there are some uh, custom uh, asserts. For example, is address, is hash. Uh, you can assert whether the transaction have reverted, uh, not reverted, assert whether some events have been emitted or not. So it's pretty useful, uh, most personally. I almost always write some uh, utility functions. For example, did it uh, revert it or not? The uh, Etherlime uh, assertions give you give you that out of the box. Yeah, and um, actually, when you uh, when you develop some unit tests, you basically sometimes you have to 
per perform transactions from different users and different addresses. Uh, we've augmented the um, contract wrapper uh, on top of the Ethers JS um, wrapper and uh, added some cool syntax to the, uh, execute transactions from different users. Just contract dot from dot function name and it executes the transaction from that uh, from that address. So uh, we can uh, compile with Etherline compile, which uh, accepts um, any kind of solid, uh, solid compile version. You can um, pass the directory. There are a couple of parameters here that you can pass. I'm not going to go into details of those, but once you uh, perform Etherline compile, get, you get your build folder in which you have your JSON uh, with the ABI and uh, the bytecode. You can see that there, uh, on the bottom there, it's info regarding the compiler uh, and the optimizer, etc. So once we are ready to deploy, we just type Etherlime deploy. Again, you can pass a couple of parameters here as well. Uh, for example, the network, private key from which you're going to deploy, uh, Ether scan API key in order to verify the contract after the deployment, etc. I'm going to show you in a minute that as well. So here is the deploy. Uh, as you can see, it's very, uh, very verbose information. You get your um, network, you get the name of the contracts, the address from which you're deploying, and uh, some useful information regarding the transaction hash, well, the status of the transaction, gas price, uh, etc. And the most important, the, the contract address after it's been deployed. The next thing that we can do is Etherrhyme test, which basically executes the test uh, the test file, um, and you get your tests run. Uh, again, it's pretty pretty um, pretty good information is displayed here. We have uh, some Etherrhyme coverage. We will, we will talk into uh, in a, in a minute, but um, just let me switch. Yeah. Here it is, so Etherlime coverage. Um, it compiles again the, the contracts, uh, performs the test. Uh, you can notice that, um, well, you notice that there's uh, the transaction, the gas usage. So every, te every test has its uh, transaction usage. Well, we very here we go. You have uh, for every unit test you get your uh, gas usage. Uh, after you've done that, uh, you're presented uh, with a uh, HTML uh, website where you can uh, browse your browse your uh, contract and see whether you where at what what line uh, you didn't get your tests covered. Uh, and uh, which is pretty pretty uh, cool. You get a visual of uh, of your uh, coverage. Lastly, here is an example where you can deploy on uh, Rinkeby, uh, Etherwine deploy, and you provide your deploy uh, deployment script. Uh, with uh, the private key from which you're deploying, the network, and the Etherscan API key. And uh, after this goes through, uh, actually to deploy it on Rinkeby, so yep, um, we'll, we'll go to Etherscan and check the deploy contract. As you can see, uh, as it goes, it's very verbose. The uh, the transaction has that's be uh, that's being mined. Uh, the the address at, at which the contract is being deployed, and after that, you get uh, information that uh, your contract is being uh, verified on Rinkeby. It takes a while to to verify it on Etherscan. A couple of seconds. Personally, I find it, uh, the verification uh, useful not only 
when you deploy something on production and uh, leave your contracts uh, verified for your users. But uh, when you're developing, uh, it's pretty useful because you can um, deploy your contract, immediately get verified, and um, start clicking on it, using it in Etherscan, and uh, see what's wrong, whether, whether everything is okay, etc. So here is the contract deployed. In Etherscan, you, you see that it's already verified. You can see the code. You can uh, perform some read functions and some write uh, to the contract functions. And yeah, that, that's basically it. We're good. We have time for questions. OK, uh, one last remark from my side was that this was all real time. This was not sped up. This was exactly what you're going to, to experience. I mean, this was just a fresh new install of Lime that I did, and I did all of these things just uh, out of the box. So it's not some funny video that is made for uh, specifically for you in order to showcase how awesome Lime is. This is what you actually get there, the good and the bad. So yeah, do you have uh, any, any questions? Anyone wants to throw something at us? Show of hands. Yes, please do. Should I pass him the mic? Sure. Hello. Uh, thanks, guys, for introduction to questions. The first one, so you said you have a verification for smart contracts. Uh, first of all, what flattener do you use? So it's your own own flattener or use uh, already existing solutions? And another one, do you consider to uh, integrate with uh, other blocks, blockchain explorers, for example, open source one like BlockScout, ATK? Um, in terms of what flattener do we use, we uh, tried reusing uh, the, uh, one of the open source ones ended up um, hitting a lot of walls and wrote it ourselves and we are pretty um, pretty happy at this stage because it works at least exactly as we as we want there uh, in terms of integrations yes we are looking for the for the correct integration so block scout is definitely something that's uh, on our mind in terms of other networks we are supporting uh, Ethel, uh, ethereum and quorum also uh, for the uh, public version we are also um, try looking to develop similar tools to Etherline for, for other networks. For example, so for example, we are partnering with Eternity on doing something very similar for, for Eternity. Don't Sorry, guys. Okay. We will go off schedule if we continue, but we have to take this offline. Cool. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much.